Hey YouTube, it's Alan here and welcome back to my channel and today I'm covering Stargirl episode number 6 and let me say this episode was exactly what I thought it would be like, cause last episode I said it was a build up episode and this is the payoff, right? So, with that said, let's talk about it So, this episode right here was crazy. Like, I really enjoy the fight sequences. Yeah, some of the um, punches was kind of hit and miss for me. But overall, the premise of an all-out battle really, really, really interested me, right? So, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me go to the beginning of the episode and pretty much lay the groundwork for you for this climactic battle at the end, right? So this episode starts off with Isaac and Artemis confronting Yolanda and Beth. Now, Isaac is pretty much talking sideways. He tells Yolanda, you know, I saw your pictures you sent years ago. Plus, I also know that you and your friends are responsible for my parents' death, right? And then as for Artemis, Artemis is coming at Beth on the premise that Beth doesn't know what it feels like to have a family broken up despite not knowing that Beth's family is currently going through a divorce, right? But see, to her, all she's worrying about is the fact that her parents aren't together. So, you know, she tells Beth, I am coming for you. I am going to show you what it feels like to have everything taken from you, so on and so forth. Back big villain monologue, and then she runs off, right? Now, with that said, we skip over to Stargirl and Pat, and they're currently at the schoolhouse cleaned up behind Paintball. Now, Paintball, of course, is the comic book name for the teacher, but yeah, his name is Paintball, right? So we go back to that scene where they clean up at the schoolhouse, and while they're cleaning up, they see a picture of um, the island, the island where Eclipso comes from, as well as other pictures laid out throughout the room. And Stargirl stated that, you know, there was a picture of Grundy and Brainwave here, but I don't see them no more. And that's when Pat responds by saying, yeah, those pictures probably wasn't really here. It was probably some Eclipse over showing y'all to get under your skin, all right? And at that moment, our boy Camera steps in. And when Camera steps in, he's like, what are y'all doing here? What's going on? And they're telling oh, we just volunteer. And we came here just to volunteer and clean up behind him. Um, the teacher is now in the mental hospital being evaluated. And we're, we're just here to help, right? And Cameron says something pretty profound and pretty, like, foreshadowing. He say things like, why does bad things always have to happen to good people in this town? Because from his perspective, his father was a good person. From his perspective, Paintball was a good person. He doesn't know that Paintball or the teacher became Paintball. He doesn't know his father became Icicle. From his perspective, good people are getting hurt for no reason. And while he's saying this, Stargirl actually picks up another picture. And that picture is none other than... Than Cindy holding the Eclipso crystal, right? And that picture right there was a dead giveaway. It was a dead giveaway on who was in control of Eclipso. In fact, Cameron even comes out and say, oh, she was here yesterday. She was here yesterday trying to talk to me about my father, right? So with the information in hand, Pat was like, yo, yo, Stargirl, yo, yo, we gotta go. We gotta go. We know where the crystal at. We got to go, right? So once again, in my opinion, this is just another link in the chain on why Cameron is going to become a bad guy. Because as of right now, Cameron is having self-doubt. Cameron is experiencing every loved one around him going away with the exception of his grandparents. Cameron is also constantly being ignored and constantly pushed off by Stargirl, the woman he loves or woman he likes or the girl he likes. Right. So I feel like Cameron later on is going to become a bad guy. He is going to become a bad guy and maybe eventually become a good guy. But he is going to become a bad guy first. So anyway, Stargirl and Pat, they proceed to leave. And when they get in the hallway, they agree to split up. Stargirl's going to grab the team. Pat's going to grab Stripes. And they're going to meet up with Cindy. Right. So while they're leaving, we skip over to Mike. And what is Mike doing? At this point in the story, Mike is currently um, driving to Zeke's or riding his bike to Zeke's garage. The reason why he's going there is because he's trying to find some parts that he needs to build a project with his father, Pat. Now, this project they're building is to help out the JSA. But while he was there, he runs into Cindy, right? And for me, I was like, yo, Cindy is going to recruit him right now. Like, Cindy is going to recruit this boy, right? That's what I thought. I honestly thought Cindy was going to recruit him. But 
But I was completely wrong. I was completely wrong, right? Because when Cindy gets there, she's like, oh, I'm not trying to recruit you. I'm trying to use you. You're one of the most important parts. You're the bait for everybody else. Because just like your daddy, just like your daddy, you're pointless. You're useless, right? So she proceeds to kidnap Mike. And to me, that was like, yo, I was completely wrong. I did not expect that. Like, honestly, I, I don't know what Mike was going to do without the Thunderbolt pin. But I honestly didn't think that she was going to, like, you know, still want him without him having that. So, with that said, so with that said, we skip over to Pat. And Pat is currently going to the garage. But when he gets there, he gets jumped by both Isaac and Artemis. Now, I know what you're thinking. These two shouldn't be much of a problem. Artemis is a little kid. And Isaac, as of uh, two episodes ago, didn't even know how to use a fiddle. But somehow, these two managed to master both techniques like this. Isaac sitting there playing his fiddle, completely wrecking on Pat. Throwing Pat around the room, using the little vibration magic and whatever. And then, as for Artemis, Artemis comes in and she completely works him over. He tells her, you know, I'm not trying to hit a kid. I'm not going to fight a kid. But despite him not wanting to hit her, she was willing to hit him. And when she hit him, she hit him heart because she ended up putting this dude in the hospital she gave him a concussion and everything else but but they did not kill him because we watched this scene closely while they was fighting um the fiddler's sons isaac was going to finish him off but artemis was like no stop no stop this is my father's friend right and to me that was like hmm hmm so Artemis is not willing to kill. Artemis is calling Pat her father's friend. Hmm. See, I think what's going to happen is Artemis, just like in Young Justice, Artemis, just like in the comic books, is going to become a good guy, right? But right now she's going to through a through a dark patch, through a through a dark area in her life. So as of right now, she's a bad guy, of course. But moving forward, she's going to become a good guy. And I got more proof of this later. But I digress. Let me get back to this. So after Artemis spares Pat's life, she tells Isaac, we came here for, for stripes. We came here for the robot. So let's, let's do what we got to do. And she jumps on top of it. And she starts to break, you know, stripes. Stripes, this episode, is completely out of commission. She breaks that thing down to little pieces like, head off everything right so following that we pick up pat in the hospital and like i said before he has a concussion and a little small easter egg he threw in there was the fact that the doctor who was working on him was none other than beth's parents right they said um dr chapel was able to um treat him you know, safely which is a little small thing not nothing big but it's just something they threw in there so we can know you know their parents was involved right but anyway, get back to get back on topic. Star Girl and her mother is sitting at Pat's bedside, and while there, Star Girl reveals to her mother that Cindy was the one responsible for doing this to Pat, and that Cindy is the one with the crystal, and Cindy is also still in town. But while they're having this conversation, they receive a phone call. So speaking of the devil herself, Cindy calls Star Girl, and when Cindy calls her, she tells her, "You know, I'm here to kill your loved ones, your friends, your family, everybody." And I also have your brother, Mike, as a hostage. And if you want to see him alive, you got to meet me in an hour at the cafeteria, right? And then she proceeds to hang up the phone. But when she hangs up the phone, Eclipso starts to talk to her. And Eclipso is pretty much hyping her up, saying, you know, I want you to kill everybody, take everyone out, except for Stargirl. Leave Stargirl for a last, right? And to me, that was a really big foreshadowing, leading to what happens at the end of this episode. But anyway, with that said, she proceeds to say, okay, cool, I agree, Um, we, we, we can do this. We can pretty much take them on, right? So, from there, we skip back to Courtney and her mother. Now, at this moment, Stargirl is still questioning herself. She is still saying she might not be able to do this. But her mother, in some sort of like weird twist of fate, decided to encourage her baby girl. I tell Star Girl, you can do this. You can go there. You can stop her. You can you can do what needs to be done. 
right? The star girl was like, okay, you know, getting all gassed up by her mother and all, decided to go out to battle. Now, with her out the way, with star girl leaving the room, Courtney's going, her mother decided to take out the card. You know what the card is, the card. Now, like I always say, any scene with the shade in it is a good scene. It's a great scene, right? So she proceeds to call the shade. She calls the number on the shade's card. And almost instantly, almost instantly, you see his shadow appear on the wall. And then behind her pops up the shade, right? And to me, that's fire. Because the shade can move like that. The shade can move that fast. Like, that is wild. Because in the comic books... The shade can travel through shadows. So I guess that makes sense that if she calls him and he's like across town, if he steps in one shadow, he can walk out the other. So, of course, that was brilliant. That was amazing. I love that scene, right? And when he appears, Stargirl Mother proceeds to tell him exactly what is going on. She pretty much catches him up to speed on all the current events. And how he found who is currently in possession of the crystal, right? And upon receiving the information, um, we can only assume that he's going to hop into the battle himself. So anyway, again, getting ahead of myself. Because this episode is crazy. Because this fight sequence, when they arrived to the school, this fight scene was amazing. Like, yes, I do have a few nitpicks with how the fight choreography was played out. But overall, I do agree with how long and how drawn out this fight scene was. To me, it wasn't fluffed. It wasn't too long. This fight scene was a perfect length for what they were setting up, right? It was all payoff. But one of the critiques I have is some of the choreography, some of the um, the rope work, the little strings they have on them, because it was a little obvious in some of these fight sequences that, like, the angles they chose to make them flip and stuff in the air was a little bit too much wiry, right? A little too much wire. And another nitpick I have was the fact that Artemis was able to keep up with Rick. Now, yeah, think about this. From my perspective, or at least from the show, what the show gives us, Rick has super strength, right? They never state that he has invulnerability, but they heavy imply that he does. Because when she shot him with the arrow, the arrow broke on him. When she blew a bomb up point blank range on him, he was able to get up and like, you know, walk it off. Which implies he has invulnerability as well as super strength. Now Artemis, in this point in the story, has no powers. Artemis is a regular high school girl with, I guess, a lot of sports and athletic, you know. But despite being athletic, I doubt this little high school girl can get her head smashed through a sink, smashed through a urinal, thrown through five doors, um, punched by a dude who can pick up a car. Like, it was ridiculous. I was like, bro, this little girl's face should be completely, like, split open everywhere. Like, she should be, like, paralyzed. She should be in the hospital. Because, you know, you can... I know it was made of porcelain. I know, like, sinks and stuff are made of porcelain. But the fact that he got her head and just, like, smashed it through one, she should be dead. The fact that he got her head and smashed it through a porcelain urinal, she should be dead. But somehow, some way, she was able to survive all that. She was able to survive all that. Man, she even got punched in the chest by this dude who could pick up a car. Again, she should be dead, but she survived all that. Right. And not only did she survive all that, but she was putting in work on Rick. Like she was just ba 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 ba. And I'm like, yo, how is she throwing all these hands and combinations on a dude who had a bomb blown blown up right here? Are you telling me her hits are stronger than an explosion? Nah, bro. I, I can't buy that. Now I do understand they want Artemis to seem as if she's formidable and everything, but with no upgrades, with no like off on camera, like, oh, hey, take this. It will make you stronger. Oh, hey, take this. It will, like, improve your speed or stamina. Like, I don't think that she can throw hands with Rick. If anything, I thought the whole Artemis fight in this should have been over like this, right? Now, Isaac, though, on the other hand, his fight isn't based on his strength. His abilities isn't based on how strong he is. 
but it's based on his skills he developed. And the skills he developed is related to the instrument, and, you know, the fiddle, right? So for him going toe to toe Yolanda, which is like, you know, it makes sense, right? And it's kind of cool because he was able to throw that concussion blast at her via the fiddle, which was pretty awesome to me. But just like, you know, Artemis, he was ultimately defeated. Now, another small nitpick I have about this fight sequence was when Stargirl was on the cosmic staff, kind of like going through, kind of surfing on it. The camera, the camera angle they chose was a pretty stupid angle. Like they have a camera like sitting by her like foot while she was flying. My wife was like, really? That's like the most stupid angle you can pick. You know, I agree with her. They could have picked a better angle. They had better angles in the episode throughout the fight sequence. We had it from the side view, front view, whatever. Those was all cool angles. But the back of the foot angle was really kicking it. Right? And to me, the way this fight scene played out was exactly how I assumed it would play out. Right? Because at the end of the day, they have Wildcat and they have Rick as well as Stargirl versus two newbies. Right, which is Isaac as well as Artemis. So Cindy was pretty much the one putting in most of the work during the fight. So anyway, following that, ultimately, you know, Courtney Stargirl and her team wins, right? So following the fight, Cindy pulls out her last trump card, and that is the Crystal of Eclipso. But before she can use it, the shade pulls up. And when the shade pulls up, he brings his shadows with him and the whole nine yards and it was pretty cool. To me, it was pretty cool. It was pretty dope. So, following the Shade entering the room, right? Because, see, I'm a big fan of the Shade. The Shade, to me, is completely badass in the show, right? And as soon as he shows up, it was like the parent entering the room. And upon his arrival, Eclipso gets immediately nervous. Eclipso's like, yo, Cindy, it's time. It's time for me to take over. Now, Cindy, though, she's too headstrong. She's like, nah, nah, I got this. But Eclipso he didn't give her a choice. He didn't give her a choice at all because he took her body like this. And upon taking her body, he went straight to work. He shot a giant, like, you know, the little Eclipso powers or whatever at the team, which the Shade had to step in and proceed to try to block it. He was able to keep some of it at bay, right, for the time being. Because while he was doing that, Eclipso was calling for Stargirl to come forward. And I guess against her will, she started to move forward. Now, when she started to move forward, he proceeded to use her staff to touch his crystal. And when that staff touched that crystal, that crystal proceeded to completely blow up. This went like, boom, right? And it knocked everybody flat on their butts. And to me, that was, that, to me, that was just like, yo, Eclipse free. They freed Eclipso. They freed Eclipso. What? What? They they freed Eclipso. And to me, that's crazy. Because if you know about Eclipso in the comic books, he's like a universal threat. He's a threat that I don't know how Stargirl and her team is going to deal with. Them. Even with the Green Lantern, with Thunderbolt and Artemis on their side, there's no way that they can probably beat Eclipso on their own. They need a little bit more heavy hitters. They need some more magic users. Because as of right now, they have no magic users on their team at all. So, with Eclipso out there, I don't know what they're going to do. Because following this event, Eclipso proceeded to completely, like, I don't even know why he left. Eclipso could have killed them all right there. Because when he got free, he freaking vaporized Isaac. He vaporized Isaac. Like, Isaac is dead. He ashes. Dirt stain on the ground. Chalk outline, right? And as for Cindy, he was like, oh, you was using me? No, I was using you, girl. He's got a little piece of rock off the floor and flicked it at her feet and sucked her right into it. Just sucked her right in. And see, but as she was falling, you know, Stargirl came and tried to help her. But of course, she she she's outclassed right now. She's completely outmatched. So I don't think Cindy personally died during this. Because if she would have died, she would have been like a little burnt mark on the ground like Isaac was. But rather, she chose he chose to pull him into the earth or pull her into this little portal. And the reason why, another reason why I think she's alive is because 
during um, Eclipso's small fight with the Shade, he tells the Shade that their powers come from the same place or something along those lines, which to me gave me the small inclination that Cindy could have potentially went to the Shadow Realm, to the Shadow World where Dr. Midnight is currently located. And that's just a guess. That's just a guess, right? I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure. This is not comic book accurate at this point, but one can hope, right? And with Cindy being a big character, I can only assume that she could have survived this some way, somehow, some shape or form, right? So following that, Eclipso is walking tall, looking good, out of being Hollywood, completely manifested, and he is just like, just walking around, looking around like, hey, what's up? What's up? I'm in charge. <laughs> and of course, Stargirl on the team tries to confront him, tries to run aboard him, but again, this is Eclipso we're talking about. He's just like, you're moved, you're gone, get out my way, bye, right? And while this is going on, outside, the moon actually turned into an eclipse, like a solar eclipse, which is kind of weird to me to be in a solar eclipse, considering it's nighttime, but it was a solar eclipse. It had a little red outline around the moon. So following that, Eclipso proceeded to run away. He proceeded to get on all fours and run away. Now, the reason why he's on all fours is because in the comic books, he's like a goblin. He looks like a goblin, right? And because he looks like a goblin... He moves like a goblin. He crawls around and stuff like that, which was pretty cool in my book. When they showed him running, that was pretty good CGI in my opinion. But I do have a problem with him running. I do have a problem with him running. To me, that's like the way writers always throw in there just to make sure that the bad guy don't win, right? Like Whenever the bad guy is close to winning or won the fight, they always have them like scurry off or something, leaving the good guys to regroup, right? So that's pretty much what they did with Eclipso's exiting. But one of the other things Eclipso did during this fight that I really, really enjoyed or was really, really impressive, actually, was that he picked up the shade and, like, stabbed him in the sides. Now, that injury probably will play a really big part on how Dr. Midnight will come back. Because with the shade injured, he is slowly slipping in and out of the shadows. Like, he cannot completely manifest himself outside of the shadows because he is currently hurt. He cannot focus to in which to bring himself out the shadows. And because he can't focus, he's kind of like, you know, sinking in, sinking out, which is why later on this episode, you see him like, you know, reappearing and then disappearing again. So I think with his injuries, the, the gateway to the shadow realm might be open, which I think is pretty cool. So anyway, following this, we skip over to Stargirl, right? And Stargirl, of course, went back to the hospital to fill her mother in into what happened. She tells her mom exactly what went down, and she tells her that Cindy is dead, Isaac is dead, Eclipso's out there on the run, and we are in deep doo-doo, right? And also during that conversation, Mike brings up the fact that he felt useless once again. He felt pointless, and that he doesn't want to help build stripes with Pat, that he wants to build his own version of stripes, which to me is a really, really, really good move. Because now not only is Big Stripes destroyed, but now they can replace Big Stripes probably with another Stripes where Mike will be in charge. Which to me is pretty awesome. You know, like, hey, why not? Mike needs to have something in his corner. Mike can't just be keep running around, keep getting kidnapped by everybody. Because as of right now, Mike is that guy you kidnap if you want to get the team's attention. <laughs> like, that's all he is right now. So with that said, we skip over to Eclipso, and Eclipso is currently walking through an alleyway. And I was like, where is Eclipso going? And at this moment, you see Eclipso transform into a little kid. The same kid from the very first episode who killed Dr. Midnight's daughter. Now, to me, it was kind of a pointless scene. I guess it was just to, like, show us or reveal that Eclipso was the kid all along. And I'm like... I'm pretty sure we all knew that or guessed that the kid was Eclipso. That's not much of a whoa moment, but it was just them doing that. It was them, you know, tightening the boots ends by showing us who Eclipso was and who the little boy was in the beginning of the show, right? And it wasn't weird at all. It wasn't weird at all for him to become a kid. There was no point for him to become a kid of this scene other than to show us who he was, right? And following that, the little kid just goes skipping down the road singing and laughing. Which, again, 
it's not obvious at all. It's not creepy at all. So, <laughs> with that said, that's pretty much this whole episode in a nutshell. And one of the things I really think is going to happen in the show moving forward is that Artemis is going to return back to the team. Artemis is going to not return to the team, but join the team. Because if you think about it, again, in the comic books, in the shows, in every every set of media, in all media, in all media, Artemis always is a bad guy first, and then she becomes a good guy. And with Cindy gone, with Isaac gone, um, with everything else, the way everything's playing out, she is going to help the JSA. She is going to become a member of the JSA. Now, will she be on Stargirl's team, so to say? No. Like, earlier I was on Reddit, and I was saying how um, I think the Green Lantern's daughter, Joaquin, and Artemis might form their own JSA. Their own, like, branch team of the JSA. Because as of right now, there's way too many heroes and not enough villains, right? So I cannot see Joaquin, Yolanda, Rick, um, the Green Lantern's daughter, Jay. Um, Stargirl, Mike, Beth, all on the same squad. Like, that's too OP. In Artemis, that's too OP. It's too big of a group. I think they're going to break up the two teams to deal with multiple problems at the same time. And to me, that is going to be so awesome. Because with Eclipso probably being dealt with this season, we're going to need more villains in order to justify this increase of heroes. So, with that said, again... This episode was amazing. And this episode was great. I enjoyed the fight sequences. Yes, I had some nitpicks that I did point out about the fight. But overall, this fight was great. Like, I will give this episode an A. Like, this episode got an A for me. Maybe not an A+, plus, but it got an A. And to be honest, I know this may sound stupid, may sound weird. But I am rather enjoying Stargirl more than I am enjoying Titans. Now, I like Titans. Um, but Stargirl to me is having, is fulfilling more for me. It's giving me, it's scratching that itch I have for DC material. Because right now there isn't much DC like shows out there. And Stargirl is, is the one in the lead. And Stargirl, and Stargirl is the one pretty much in the lead. Like to me, Stargirl is the pinnacle of where we're at right now. Yeah, I wish it was a little more adult oriented, but it's good for what it is. And I respect it for what it is. So I will say Stargirl to me is kind of in the lead in the head of Titans. So, with that said, please leave a like on this video as well as a comment down below telling me what you think exactly is going to happen moving forward. Because as of right now in the story, we're at this point where anything can happen. Eclipso's free. The Shade is hurt. Dr. Midnight is revealed to still be alive. Um, Stargirl team is constantly growing. Artemis is on the run. Shaquem got the Thunderbolt. The Lantern Daughter ran off. It's just complete mayhem right now. And with the post credit scene for next episode, we, we reveal in early promo materials that Brainwave is back in the story. So there's just so much going on. So please tell me down below what you think is going to happen, right? So with that said, do the three great things, which is like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.